Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. We're so glad to be here with all of you. Uh, for those of you watching the recording, thank you for joining in, tuning in. Um, if you guys are not yet on our Telegram channel so that you can be updated to every single call happening, we're going to drop the link here in a little bit. And uh, tonight we have the pleasure of interviewing a great brother of ours. So Angel Suarez, he is living in Puerto Rico right now. He resides in Puerto Rico and Florida. Um, it's, uh, I got actually introduced to Eric Brown to him, and we've been able to spend time in Puerto Rico together. He showed us around. Um, and we've also been able to go to the 10X event in Miami, if I'm not mistaken, uh, last year. So we've had a lot of great experiences in more importantly, this is a guy that I respect a lot. I look up to a lot, someone that's constantly working on himself. And I've seen the type of work ethic that, that he has and the seriousness and diligence that he has when it comes to building the life of his dreams. And he's someone that is accomplishing some amazing things in the real estate, uh, not only as an agent he used to be, but now in the investor space with his father, um, they're building a true empire here. So we're super excited to have you here, Angel, with us tonight, my brother. Um, before we ask you a few questions, uh, we're super excited to dive into your brain and see how you think and, you know, the, what are the lessons that we can, that we can get from you. Uh, but before we do that, I, I would love to pass the mic to you and maybe you can take two, three minutes and just introduce yourself and from your, from your own words, Tell us a little bit about, you know, what it is that you do and what you guys have been able to accomplish so far. And just a little intro to you, Angel. The people uh, that are watching right now, we're all entrepreneurs, or most of us at least, and we may have maybe in different industries, right? But we're all committed to creating positive waves of change for ourselves in our lives and in the community in the world. So we're excited to have you here, brother. Passing the mic to you. Thank you, Nick, for that great introduction. Uh, I met Nick... Uh a couple of years ago and it was uh, basically we hit it off right off the bat and you know this experience that uh, we've seen both of ourselves grow together and you know those uh, times that we catch up we can see how each other uh, we progress you know each time that we get in touch so a little bit about me you know uh, I began doing real estate uh, ever since uh, I was 19 years old so I've been five years in the real estate game and uh, you know first I started as an agent uh, renting out places uh, as a leasing agent and you know I progressed until buying and selling and then uh, I got the opportunity to uh, associate myself with an investor and run his uh, operations and innovate in the management industry as a, an investor and also in the management. So uh, throughout uh, this opportunity, uh, we have had the, uh, the, the privilege to work in three new developments together. And basically right now throughout this crisis, you know, uh, we've uh, overcome our expectations, you know, this past month, we, we recollected approximately like 90% of our rent. You know, that's in a tough spot. You know, we, uh, we got uh, uh, way beyond what we targeted. And, you know, uh, we privilege ourselves in regarding uh, choosing the best clients to our property. Uh, within our industry right now, we are 90% uh, uh, 95% occupied. And, you know, it, it's been a process and something that I wanted to share with you guys is just like, uh, so in social media, you know, they, they paint yourself, uh, this real estate. So like, uh, freedom. So, um, how do you say, uh, easy, you know, you just, uh, you, you work what, whatever time you want, you know, you could work that life, you know, but something that I have, uh, applied to myself and I've seen how that uh, a year by year uh, I've progressed is just that the amount of uh, work that you put in to yourself uh, you can see it escalate in your workplace so for me uh, I don't have a problem working 12 14 16 hour days but if it is not effective or I don't use it to my advantage it's not worth anything so how do I prep myself in the morning to get the most out of the day. So my meditation, my priming, uh, 
uh, you know, those little things that make the difference to make myself be more focused uh, throughout each day. And also the most essential that I've been practicing this year that I proposed to myself was scheduling my time. So scheduling, scheduling my time even by the second. So ever since I wake up, I have all my Google Calendar set up until when I go to sleep. Uh, every second of the day, I have it scheduled. And, you know, having, having that uh, discipline to get in uh, that Sunday night at whichever time, you know, scheduling that hour, hour and a half, I can see it translate to, towards my outcomes for the next week. And those things that, you know, I can't, I'm not a machine, you know, I can't do all those things. You know, we're all human, but I at least have a guideline to see where my outcomes are. You know, yeah. you always have those things that come up and we can't predict. But if we, you know, go into that check mark, go into that check mark, we at least have a, a map of where we're going. Right. So um, basically it's discipline mostly, you know, the more I do it, the better I become. And, you know, I know that I've, my productivity has increased significantly ever since I put myself to that, you know, investing that time to see where my time is and where my time is going, you know, and, and now that I'm uh, doing that, I'm taking it to a next level and seeing a, uh, I don't know if you guys heard of the uh, four Eisenhower quadrants. So mm. classifying the things that happen throughout your day as urgent and important, mm. non-urgent and important, uh, urgent but non-important, and non-important uh, and non-urgent. I can mm -hmm. send you guys a link so you guys could see an example of how that looks like and measuring, you know, something that I've noticed throughout you know, my, my whole journey is measuring, you know, if you don't measure, you don't know where you're at. You know, you, I, I felt like at the beginning I was always lost and I was always reacting to different situations, mm -hmm. you know, but the more I, I measure, the more that I'm tracking, the more that I am progressing is a, how I efficiently measure my outcomes, you know, from all those different situations that come throughout the day, how am I learning, you know, because the, the best uh, thing that I think uh, we can all do, you know, when we all make mistakes, but how can we uh, make mistakes well in regards to how can you learn from those mistakes for the next time that they happen, you know, it's another one of those and you know how to approach it or you know how to prevent it, you know? I love it. I love it. Angel, let me stop you for a second, man, because you're, you're already dropping knowledge right here. So super grateful. And so I have a question for you because you know, I know that from us being able to talk a lot of times and spend time together, I've been able to uh, just witness the work ethic that you bring to your craft. And it is, I mean, it, it, is, it is up there. I mean, you're, you're from the people, my network, you're one of the top ones that you are willing to grind it out, man. And, it, and it's amazing to see that. So my question to you, my very first one, and by the way, we're going to do about four or five questions. So maybe three, three minutes, you know, three, four minutes, if you can keep it. And then we're going to rock to the next one. Okay. Um, awesome. But, I'm excited. Yeah, let's do it. So and my first question is because I know that you've learned a lot of what you're doing now uh, with your father, right? So you, you were building the business with your father right now, and he's already been successful when you got into this game. What is the greatest lesson that you've been able to learn from your father in this journey that you've been in so far? Okay, so the, the biggest uh, lesson I've learned from my father is discipline. You know, if you don't have discipline and you don't own your word, you are nobody, you know, and um, one of the most things that I respect about my father is when he says something or when he commits to something, he, com he, he executes it no matter at the, what cost. So uh, if he says he's going to wake up at three in the morning, he's going to wake up at three in the morning, you know, or if he's going to say that he's going to settle in that, you know, no matter what it costs him, you know, his word is worth more than anything else. Wow. That's beautiful. That's powerful, man. I think it's, it's awesome hearing that because especially as we, uh, you know, a lot of us enter the, 
the parenthood season in our lives as well to pay attention to that, right? Because if he said these things, but he didn't follow through, you wouldn't have that as an example. So that's amazing, man. Thank you for bringing that to our attention here. Uh, Mike, passing it to you, my brother. Huge. Own your word. Wow. Angel, what's going on, brother? I'm super excited to, to rock you with some questions and, and pick your brain a little bit. Um, I'm going to start in a different direction, man. Um, I'm always so intrigued by the young hustler who has chosen a niche and is grinding away at that niche. My question to you, and I know that, you know, the 20 people on this call are going to be able to benefit. Um, you know, me personally, man, Oh, like I, I wanted to grab all these little things. And even when I found my niche, it was like, okay, like lead gen, like, is it online? Is it in person? Do I throw events? Like, like this, this broad spectrum that just becomes a distraction of procrastination, so to speak, right? You at 24, seeing the success, knowing exactly the industry and the niche that you're, you're focused on and being able to effectively put in the hours that you're putting in. Uh, what are some of the tips that you can give to the people on the call on how to pick your niche and how to avoid distraction and how to get laser focused and how to create that discipline in a, an effective way, right? Hearing you talk about measuring, I feel like some of us are trying to measure seven or eight different things that are leading us so far away from like this straight line method. So what are some of the things that you've seen um, at 24 at a young age that have helped you create that discipline in that uh, laser focused mentality okay first of all for me uh, I think uh, the most essential thing is uh, the process you know so uh, the process of uh, measuring uh, the pain of procrastination how do you measure that pain how do you feel it you know if, if I, I know you change from two different things you know it's pleasure or pain so for me, I got a, a, in the process of getting into real estate, you know, a, there was a lot of different ideas that I wanted to accomplish, but you know, but at the end, I, I started to measure what was the most that I had, a, you know, results in or, or basically outcome, what was my biggest outcome? So what, or what? a niche in real estate i felt that i had the most uh, passion or gratification you know because i f i go in every day i have this energy and you know i and i feel committed and driven towards you know what i do and you know I, identifying that at such a young age it, it has given me the opportunity to go full out you know i i don't i don't go back i only go forward because uh, if i go back and uh, basically go into that uh, thinking phase you know I, I'm just slowing myself down and having that vision and focusing on what I want to produce in the in the long run you know because an investment is not just today it's five years 10 years 15 years 20 years you have financial commitments you have your uh, real estate analysis what how do you want to value your property how, how do you want to flip it what's your long game what's your short game you know and measuring all those different things and and I, and it gets me excited even talking about this you know because it, it brings me what you want to do and if you have that clarity on what you want to do uh, you can do that for the rest of your life and and you'll be basically uh, waking up every day uh, committed to do what you want to do that's powerful, man. One of the things that you just said, Angel, that really stood out for me, you said that the thinking phase can slow us down, right? When we get in the habit of just thinking, we're thinking, we're thinking, we're thinking. And I know I can definitely relate with that. I'm sure everyone else can as well. Um, you know, you also mentioned that you are driven every single day to work towards your goals. I've been able to realize from personal experience as well that when I'm making progress, right, when I'm seeing the wins, is when I'm most driven to keep going, right? So like yeah. the, the days that I'm, or the times, the seasons that I'm, I'm in my head and I'm thinking that I'm not acting enough, so I'm not seeing enough results, is when I give, and I, when I procrastinate the most, is when I'm overthinking the most, is when I'm doubting myself, doubting my business, doubting my dream, right? 
Um, have you been able to, have you experienced that in your, you know, road and journey? And if so, what have you done or what are the things that you use to combat that and not get stuck in that cycle? Definitely, man, especially in these times, you know, when you had all the uncertainty that we were facing, you know, when you, we, we had that news for us, you know, that lockdown, everybody has to stay on their house on March 15, you know, we're all like uh, paralyzed, you know, and, you know, seeing how we were going to uh, basically counteract all those different things for us is action. For me, you know, for our, for our team, getting aligned with our team. Is everybody okay with our team? For us, you know, uh, one of our uh, mission values is basically integrity and communication. You know, if we have the transparency to have the communication with all of us, we can work on it as a team, build up our mastermind and multi multiply you know, the effectiveness that we want to transmit. So it's when you are in those times, the most that I could recommend is go in with your associate or go in with and, and mastermind it out, you know, share each other's feelings, share where you're at right there, you know, and, and building upon that to progress and, and, and see where you want to go. Because if you don't do that, you know, you, both of you could lower yourselves instead of growing yourselves, you know, if you get stuck with your own brain. Brilliant. I love it. I love it. We're moving. Um, so much content guys. If you're, if you're enjoying this, drop some one, show some love, uh, angel giving his time and, and helping us out. Right. We're all, we're all hungry for knowledge. That's why we're here. It's Friday night. Um, doing our thing. Worries. Cool. What's your biggest fear? Uh, my biggest fear is, I think, is uh, complacency. You know, being a mediocre. You know, that's my biggest fear. That's why I basically uh, being complacent with where I'm at. You know, can you or dive into that a little more. That word, yes. mediocre. I would. Can you just, just you know, everyone, yes. everyone has. So for me, so for me, this times, you know, finding people that were uh, basically uh, motivated or uh, strive for more, and we're not, you know, obeying what you know, uh, different uh, governments uh, were putting in place, and, and you know, having a little like vacation in their house. Uh, was difficult, you know, because it, it was just, uh, you know, find, finding the, the growth from within and, and alienating your team to, to conduct effectively throughout these times that, you know, uh, your life was at stake, your, your family's life was at stake, you know, and, and, and how do you use that fear to, to combat the complacent people, you know, the, the complacent that you have within yourself that you want to sleep in because, oh no, yeah, I work remotely. I don't have to punch in, you know, or I work remotely, you know, I could, I could just tell that uh, I'm, I'm there and I could just sleep in and, 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 and crunch a couple of hours later, you know, but having the discipline to come in and uh, basically perform each and every day, for me, that was uh, my uh, the biggest fear that set me back down, you know, that, that sets me down and, and fighting that fear every day, you know, for me is uh, an opportunity to grow. That's beautiful. How do you fight that? Like what, what is the, what is the self-talk inside of your head when the, when that little lesser side of you, you know, the, the lower self is telling you, Hey, just stay in bed a little bit longer. It's all good. There's, there's no problem here. You know, you can always come back later. You can come back tomorrow. What do you do internally, right? Because it's always internal. There's something internal yes. getting you to move. What is that thing for you? Basically, uh, it varies. You know, each and every time that you get into your playing field, you know, that's how I call my brain, you know. So uh, how is your sleep pattern, you know? How, uh, how are you waking up, you know? Uh, for me, the thing that wakes me up most in the morning is just like, what is your purpose? You know, my purpose is to create freedom through my properties, 
create the freedom to have your own home, to have your own secure. That's what I want to create every time I show my property and every time I uh, rent it, you know, that they feel safe and they feel freedom that they have their own place and that they could live uh, in tranquility. And, and reminding myself each and every day makes me, you know, have that energy to do what I need to do, you know, to, to pray, to meditate, to prime, to have a cold shower. You know, that's, those are my things that I do in the morning that uh, get me out of that comfort zone. Because if I uh, go into social media, those first 30 minutes, I'm done. Those days happen, but what am I going to do to uh, basically nurture my brain uh, after that so I don't get into that slump? You know, that, that, that slippery slope that gets into uh, basically your routine because uh, I, I've read many times and it's, I've been basically a, 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 you can say it in Spanish, I'll translate it. Basicamente, he sido testigo de eso. Say one more time, say the last word. Uh, testigo, testigo. Testimony? Uh, basically, yeah, that's my testimony. Like uh, every time that you, I be complacent in the morning, those 30 minutes, my productivity and my effectiveness slows down throughout the day. Things that I, used to take me 15 minutes take me 50 minutes, you know, and, and you know, and it all slows down and I have to get an extra hour to three hours of work when I used to do that in 10, 11 hours, you know, I have to do 14, 12, 16, because I feel like how you use your time and how you crunch your minutes is the formula because it doesn't matter if you work 16 hours, you know, people who work eight hours can do things that people in 16 hours can't do. Mm, that's huge. A couple, a couple of things that I pulled from that, you know, just backtracking to what you were saying about what your purpose is. Um, I think it's so important, you know, especially now, like we're all in this transformational phase of like, why am I doing the things that I'm doing? What's my why? And I hear a lot of people, even myself, when I write it down, it, it, it's all about me. Right. And I heard you say freedom and I was expecting you. I was assuming that you were talking about your own freedom and your own comfort. And you immediately were saying, I want my clients to feel that freedom, that they're comfortable, that they're at home. And it just takes me to Zig Ziglar of the more we are focused on our clients and getting them what they want, we will in turn get what we want. Uh, me and Libby were talking today about sales and in one moment we wanted to say, how many families are we helping? You know, and like that, just that transition, I think is so important to your success. So, um, man. And it I, makes you, and sorry to interrupt, it makes no, you vi visualize um, basically um, that, that gratification. For me, that the gratification of the client when you hand their keys, you know, when, when they feel like, wow, you know, I got something, you know, that I, I got my new home, you know, that gratification, uh, it brings you back to, uh, you know, that all that feeling, all that passion that you feel for what you're doing. And, and, and if you don't feel that, you know, you, you have to revise, you know, because, uh, for me, uh, at, at the beginning, when I was doing basically buying and selling, I didn't feel that passion. I didn't feel this that I'm right now, you know. And putting this into what I, where I'm at right now, it's wow, you know. It, it's I don't know how to put it in, in words because you know all the things that I'm doing are multiplying because uh, I'm doing what I want to do, not yeah. what I need to do law of attraction, you're attracting it into your life. And uh, more importantly, the more aligned with alignment, right? The more we're in alignment with the things that our soul is, is called to do, the more we in turn are, are receiving the things that we want to receive. It's a beautiful message. Uh, my last question for you, Angel, something that, you know, I think is so important. Um, you know, you grabbed my attention when you were talking about the process. You said, for me, the most important thing is the process. And I need to look 
at what was most profitable so that I can build my process around the things that are working. Um, from a personal development standpoint, what skill would you say? And after he says this, I want everyone on this call to write down on a scale of one to 10, where you think you are in this specific skill. But Angel, what skill would you say has been the most profitable for you in your entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey and, and the skill that you, you know, kind of look back on and you're like, that's the money maker right there. If you had to choose one. Scheduling time. Scheduling time. So simple, but so effective. Is that something, would you mind, would you mind taking us a little bit deeper onto your own personal, um, how okay, you yeah, set yeah. your time? What is, what is the process look like for you setting your time? Okay, so first of all, I revised my schedule from last week. So where I'm at and where I'm going, you know, measure all the outcome. So my celebration for me, you know, because I have to enjoy this because if I don't enjoy it, my brain isn't programmed to want to need it for the next week, you know. And for me, I have a little celebration. It's not that wow. You know, for me, it's like pumping my chest and that's my way, the way I'm programmed, you know, and after that, I do a list of all my to do's. And then after that, I go in and I go into my Google calendar that is synced into my phone, my tablet and my computer. And I put reminders on it and I invite the guests that I need to be in that meeting with and I schedule it by colors. So I have the people, the colors that are, I need to follow up with people. I need to uh, have a meeting with that person. I have to, um, I have to do some uh, self growth uh, in, in my calendar, you know, and, and I have to do, go to do, uh, do my workout routine. Uh, I have to read. You know, I have to do my financial analysis for my properties. You know, what, what, uh, you know, putting all those different colors and basically putting it as simple as uh, you can. Because if you complicate yourself in regards to like the different tasks and putting notes on it and, and, and all that, you know, you, you don't finish it. You know, you first have to finish it. That's the first process. It, you know, basically, Finishing that whole first week for me, wow, you know, when I, fir uh, when I first uh, sat down on, on January, you know, because I always had agendas and to-do lists, you know, but that didn't ever got, I got somewhere, but I didn't get all, you know, the way that I wanted. But uh, sitting down and, and measuring basically the time that I put in, I was just like, wow, okay, you know, this takes me five minutes, this takes me 15 minutes, this takes me 45 minutes when I'm on chart, you know, uh, so I could have that and see how I progress next week, you know, and may, let's see if next week I could do it in five minutes uh, quicker, you know, and then uh, sitting down with that calendar and seeing where I'm at at the end of the week has made me seeing if I'm procrastinating, if I'm progressing, if, uh, if I need to, uh, if if a meeting that I uh, did uh, was too long, you know, how, how could I make that uh, shorter? You know, basically, it, it bas uh, having that time management was the most essential and biggest step that I've taken in this uh, year of 2020. Because uh, for me, uh, everybody has time, you know. In your life. That's beautiful, bro. And I mean, it makes sense, you know, if we're not controlling our time and we don't know where our time is going, then it's just, it's, that's running our lives. Right. Um, I love that. And so my last question to you is, um, and maybe you've already answered angel, but you know, when you spoke about the keeping track of your business, right. I understand that the revising at the end of the week is obviously part of that. You, you tracking where the progress and where you got to improve. I know for myself, there's a quote that came, um, that appeared to me. I can't remember half a year ago or so. If I don't track my business, I don't have a business. 
and you know, I'm, I'm sure you can relate. And so I would like to dive in a little bit more into that process. What is that? How do you track your business? Are you just tracking the end goals, the result, or are you tracking the progress or process or, you know, what, how, how does that, what does that look like to you? Okay. So basically I measure one area of a, uh, the business each week, because if I, I can't measure them all at the same week, you know, because I'll, I'll complicate myself and I won't get other things done, you know? So basically now that it's the beginning of the month, you know, how are my receivables? You know, how am I doing? How is the invoicing? You know, do we get everybody's invoicing? Did, did uh, everybody use their new portals? You know, uh, how, how is all that measuring that part of the business? Um, and uh, the end of the month is all my expenses and the uh, second and third week, is my marketing. How am I marketing my, my properties? How am I doing new things to instigate uh, or new offers for my clients to uh, engage and get into uh, my business? So uh, basically for me, I measure those three uh, areas each week, uh, each month. And those have been uh, the, the basically the result makers for me because if I don't have those clear, I don't know uh, where I'm at, you know, it, it, it keeps building, it keeps building, it keeps building and, and, you know, and you start making business decisions out of nothing because you don't have nothing. Absolutely. I can relate a hundred percent, man. And, and that's really valuable. Thank you so much for that. Um, any last questions, Mike, that you have before we stop the recording or are we good? No, I think that's it. Let's go into that private, yeah. you know, uh, with the people we have on the call, if you want to close it out. Yeah, beautiful. Angel, thank you so much, brother. I know I took a, a lot of notes here. I'm excited to dive in and apply a lot of the things that you shared with us tonight. For those of you watching the recording, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. And also, wait a second. Uh, I oh. wanted to share with you guys the book that I'm reading right now. Uh, it's been an outstanding book the second time that I'm reading it this year, and it's called Principles by Ray Dalio. I really recommend it. It's, it goes into everything, you know, life, your work discipline. And basically it's a, for me, a, basically how he analyzes his business in regards to his policies, his procedures, uh, all of his uh, masterminding to get where he went. You know, he's one of the biggest uh, hedge fund guys in the finance industry and uh, I really recommend it if you guys have a chance to read it. Uh, awesome. Hands down. Awesome principles. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna uh, also for the people that are watching on YouTube, we're gonna drop your all your social media links uh, in the description box so they can get connected with you as well. And we're gonna dive in now for everyone that's with us live into our 10-15 minute mastermind uh, time here together. Thanks so much for joining us.